Welcome to the Autumn Garden. My name is Syra. Today's video is going to be a tour of my permaculture gardens and a harvest marathon. So I still got really a lot of produce out there to be harvesting. I'm gonna start at one end of the gardens and just work my way through. This area of my garden is kind of like the laneway. We have the driveway down and just garden all on the side. Beautiful peppermint chard here. The winter boar hybrid is very hardy, too cold. This hops vine here, I just grow it because it's beautiful. It's actually quite clean for aphids. That's really nice. So many volunteer potatoes in here that just popped up. Yoga. Growing up the cedar tree here. You follow me everywhere, don't you? Bob? Yeah, to make sure you're not doing something stupid. Why would you throw your clippers? Nasty. Grab these few San Marzano tomatoes here. Really nice weather still, but it is getting late. We got lots of potatoes in here, along with some fava beans that uh, kind of didn't work out all that well. But the runner beans did. Uh, more of a vining crop is actually more ideal to grow with potatoes. The main reason I planted beans here is to help fix the nitrogen for my potatoes. All right, there's the one row harvested. Some beauties in here. Ah, purple ones. So I've got quite a few volunteer potatoes just growing around. Let's see how these uh, carrots here are doing. One of the earliest plantings. This next bed here is a little bit later of a planting. I think it's a different variety though. They're more slim. Might have been maxi a little bit faster. Let's go check them out actually, Let's see how they're doing. Yeah, nice. Oh, these are ready too. So yeah, I've got two rows of potatoes that were planted out fairly late. So I'm gonna wait on those another week or two. Got some turnips in here. Beautiful butterfly bush here, planted out uh, last summer got a bunch more that i planted around uh, this fall yeah so really a lot of carrots and potatoes in this whole area got more potatoes here started digging a few really beautiful red fingerling a big brussels sprout so i had onions in that bed and garlic in that bed that's all harvested That's a nice solid head. So it's really nice to have a few fresh cabbages we can make coleslaw from. So that's going to be stored just like that in a cool room. To just be, to really see. Pulled off of these blueberries. Blueberries are pretty much done. 
There are a few stragglers, probably could get a little bin if I went through and picked them. This is the third harvesting of these Yukjiki curry squash. We're moving into this kind of mid section here, a little bit more food forest like. I have some squashes in this tower, butternuts that I'm still gonna leave for another week or two. A bean trellis here and some beautiful grapes growing up this large tree. And then on the pussy willow tree behind in there, a seedless grape growing just kind of wild right over the whole uh, willow tree. So next I'm gonna jump on to harvesting some green beans. These have just been coming nonstop. So if you pick them right like that, leave that right on the on the vines, then they're all ready to go for freezing or eating or you know processing. So it saves a lot of time doing that. Some of these are getting fairly mature. Still good though. I think that's enough for now. Got lots of nice beets in the front here. This will be a late harvesting. I'll leave them as long as they can go. Coming over to be part of the show? Yeah. Look, big bean. Her. <laughs> See ya, still got two squash here that are just trying to mature up. Give them a couple more days. Starting to tan up. Since the sun is over on some other crops over here, I'm gonna go harvest some apples and some squash and leave the grape harvest for tomorrow morning. I have a goji berry trellis here, a Fuji apple. It's kind of taking a break from fruiting. There's three apples on her. Actually, I think there was four, one fell off. Hey, Juniper, we're gonna harvest some apples. You sit. I like leaving them on a bit longer so they really get that beautiful red color. And these are just so amazing. I did thin this tree, but I definitely could have taken a few more out down in some places. Some of them are a little smaller, but definitely some gorgeous large ones still. So I was a little nervous last night. There was a bear in the area. So uh, Juniper stayed out all night to make sure the bear didn't get in. A couple of pear trees, a bunch of fruit on them as well. Still a lot of stuff in the garden. So I was a little bit worried. Definitely getting these today. Yeah, so more carrots in here do need to be harvested. Oh, what am I doing? Am I harvesting more carrots? I think I'll leave it for now. And they still are blooming a little bit. They hang in there for a while, just putting out the odd bloom. So much seed, really viable seed. And so spaghetti squash are part of the pepo group, the pepo species, cucurbita pepo. We're stuck in the fence here. Two squashes do this on me. Yeah, it's all dry. I think that might be all right. Just has some markings, but I think that should keep still. Oh, I did scrape it just a tiny bit. A nice one here. So I just used one of these clips. And that's all it really needed. It uh, really supported it well. I also grab a couple of these large tomatoes here. This is black crimson. When they do that, sometimes it's multiple fused flowers. Okay, let's take this over to the stash. I think I'm gonna go pick some kyukutsa. The vines are dying back now. Ooh, we should probably come and grab some of these beets as well. <laughs> these are, whoa, yeah. These are pretty large. Okay, I'll come back to that. 
Got leeks in there as well. So we're gonna pick a bunch of these fruits here. This is a gourd. It's very much like a zucchini, uh, but it's sweeter. This is too big for eating. It's kind of fun though. I wanted to see how big these, these guys got, but yeah, started rotting on the bottom. So this is a really nice size for culinary use. Pretty abundant crop, these guys. Had six plants in here and they really just took over a bit too much of the greenhouse and actually shaded out some of my peppers and things. Will it pull off? <laughs> no. They kind of feel like milk and goat tits. <laughs> that was soggy. <laughs> they totally feel like it. <laughs> oh, we got some hiding out in here. That's about it. Back to beets here. Love the variety. Cylindra, they're really nice for slicing and processing just because they're more like a carrot. Just the shape of them. Some beauties. Partial tray there that I never planted out. Just didn't get my leeks in early at all. Leeks are nice to have, but I don't focus on them. I might leave, I think I will, just like last year, leave some in the ground and then you can harvest them in spring. All right, so it's the next morning and I'm back at it. Continue this harvest marathon here. I'm at my grapevines and we're gonna start just by harvesting everything that's ready on here. We got uh, a lot of wasps uh, on my blush variety um, because there is a nest close by. So I might have to spray them off with some water or get some smoke or something. We'll see how that goes. Got my ladder. There goes gumboot already. Careful of the wasp, buddy. <laughs> Don't bite that. He's like putting his nose right on them. Hey. Now I'm just gonna start by harvesting some of these lower ones in here. A bit tangled in there too, because there is some bird netting that I put on last year that I never took out. So it's kind of like halfway in there. I'll never get it out now. That is so packed in here. Oh no. Already have a full basket here. Vines are getting crazy everywhere. Pulls. Well, I certainly won't be reaching into harvesting those ones. I was able to harvest about three quarters of everything on this vine without getting stung or using any smoke or water. What I think I'm gonna do is just wait till tonight. I think they go back into their ground hive in the evening. You hear what yeah, he that's saying? what he thinks. Well, I'm staying up. So I'm just gonna harvest them tonight. If not, I'll spray down, you know, water in the morning and see if I can get them that way. So it does work out pretty well growing a grapevine up a large tree like this because you can lean a ladder up and really access the top. You know, that is if you're not just growing on a nice reachable arbor. And uh, it's a little bit harder to get at these ones that are just growing wild over this willow tree. It has really pulled down though and shaded kind of the whole area. It's like really leaned over. And so it's kind of like a little cove underneath here. It'll get even sweeter as it gets colder out. 
Bathtub wax beans. Baby potatoes grown out of a pile of strawberry plants. Look at these beauties. So sugar sweet. Seedless. Gonna be drying a bunch of these for raisins. Too. Oh, you wasps are finding all these, huh? That's about it for grapes for now. These ones I'm gonna try getting tonight and I've left a few up there for birds. All right, let's see if those little feathers are out now. It's like 2.30 in the morning. Nice moon out. Mm, there's one. The little guy's just sleeping right there. 